Hey, hello everyone. This is Philip Martin, and uh, welcome to yet another on film, on video, which I think we're going to keep doing every week, or at least most weeks, even after we get out from under this uh, house arrest thing, because it seems to be working. Uh, I've had some good feedback from it, uh, not as much as we had hoped, <laughs> but there never is because, you know, um, but anyway, people are, people have noted it. And, um, so we'll keep trying to do it. We'll keep trying and we'll bring in more features as it, uh, as it goes along. I'm typically doing this early in the week because I'm worried about the technical aspects, which we have to to master we haven't gotten that yet I can put it up on YouTube and they can take it down and put it back up on YouTube and we can see it in the newspaper and all that so it's working fine but I'm but I'm not quite sure why it's working fine and until I understand what uh, what exactly I'm doing I'm going to be very cautious and get this done early in the week because I'm doing this early in the week I have not yet read a lot of the content that's in this week's section. I know what the lead story is because I wrote it. Uh, I know that I'm expecting Mr. Dan Liebarger to file a um, interview story with uh, Matt Smith who owns uh, Riverdale Theater here in um, Little Rock and a lot of other theaters around the state and he's going to reopen next week as, on the 18th and I don't know exactly what his plans are or exactly how that's going to work, but we should have that in this week's uh, section. Um, I imagine it's going to be 25% capacity. I imagine that it's going to uh, have some sort of product that is out there already. Maybe some of these IFC films, maybe... Um, there are other films that are playing in drive-ins around the, the country. Uh, and probably some classic movies that he's got access to. Uh, so we'll see. We'll see. I, I'm very anxious to see that. As I've said before, and I will keep saying, we're not going to really see theaters reopen and Hollywood restart until, uh, well, until the theater chains reopen, which... I don't know what their criteria will be for them because that's corporate criteria. That's not necessarily uh, driven by any um, any state or governmental action. Uh, AMC <laughs> probably will never open all its theaters. Um, again, they've got those 200 classic, classic AMC theaters that are kind of uh, not up to snuff. Uh, with the rest of the chain that they required when they bought Carmike. And I don't know. Those theaters are probably going to um, not reopen as AMCs. Is, that, that would be my guess. I would guess they would try to, to sell them, offload them somehow. Um, or maybe they just won't open for a while. Because we have a production shutdown as well. Uh, we have a lot of films that are finished that aren't coming out until... Uh, New York and Los Angeles come back online and we can get these movies into uh, big cineplexes and big chains. And there's no reason for any of our big movie houses, chains, to open until there's product. And so we're just going to have, we're going to have a lot more weeks like this where we're scrambling around to find what the big movie is <laughs> of the week. And the big movie of the week is always or for the foreseeable future is going to be something that's on Netflix or something that's on Amazon Prime or iTunes or like that. Um, I'm kind of enjoying it, though I have no brief against the big movies. I mean, I think if you want to go see, you know, a, a Marvel Comics uh, universe, cinematic universe film, you know, that's, that's fine. I don't have... I'm not on Martin Scorsese's side in that debate, I don't think they've de naturally demeaned our culture. I do think they suck out a lot of oxygen, and you have a lot of other films that don't make it to those screens because of that. But in the environment we're at, I'm kind of happy t that we can watch films at home and see them the way we see them, you know. Uh, I'm really not missing 
going to the theater and watching Thor, I mean, it's not my kind of movie. My kind of movie is a kind of movie like we profiled this week, the uh, lead review, Driveways, which is a fantastic little film that nobody would have heard of, I don't think, had this been a normal summer, the normal a normal um, movie year. Um, and as it is, it may get a little bit of attention. It actually opened on, uh, I mean, it actually became available last Friday. But <laughs> another peek behind the curtains here. We're not necessarily getting a lot more screener attempt, uh, screeners. I mean, we are. We're getting a lot of films that are being offered to us to... Um, to see ahead of time, but they're not always the movie that we want to see or the movie that we think is important. So we actually waited for this to come out. Then we reviewed it because it's going to be around forever, for a long time anyway. And we're going to kind of go that way more and more, I think, because one of the things we did when Karen, my wife, who's downstairs editing my copy right now, when she started this movie style section, one of the things we decided we were going to do was we were going to be about the movies. We were going to be about the movies that opened that week. We are going to try to review every movie that opened in Arkansas in a given week. Okay. The other thing we were going to try to do was not do what the old Gazette and the old Democrats sometimes did, which was review a movie days after it opened because chances were, well, I mean, just because, you know, don't go see movie on opening day, then write about it the next week. Because a lot of those movies were already gone, uh, the value of the re review had decreased. Now, in this environment, the way I look at it is that, you know, you can run a review a week or even two weeks after a film opens because it's going to be around for people to see. It's going to be available to stream or to rent or to buy or it's part of the Netflix, you know, kind of library or part of the HBO library, that sort of thing. That's another, you know, bad education, which we reviewed last week. We did not review that in advance. Uh, part of that is because I'm a one man <laughs> kind of section here and I don't have the time or the patience to deal with publicists all the time. I spend way too much of my time doing that, to be honest. I would much rather write about these things and edit other people who are writing about these things rather than spend my time sending emails and phone calls and trying, asking people to show us their movie. Uh, it's just not <laughs> a really good way to use our time right now, especially now, I don't think so. Uh, so we're just going to keep doing it the way we're doing it, piecing it together. We're running an L.A. Times um, piece on Spaceship Earth this week because I didn't have time to see Spaceship Earth myself and it's not something I'm all that interested in and uh, and the piece is good. One of the things we try to do here in our newspaper is give you quality stuff. And a lot of the stuff that sometimes we come across in that part of the wire, the, the stuff that's moved by the Associated Press and all that, is sometimes not that great. I really don't like a lot of the review. That's one of the reasons that we started a movie section in the first place was because we didn't like a lot of the, 20-something years ago, uh, we didn't like a lot of the reviews that were moving on the wire. We thought we could do better. I think we do do better. At the same time, when there's a good war piece, something written like by Ann Hornaday of the Washington Post or Justin Chang of the L.A. Times, there's still a lot of good writers. There's still a lot of good film writers. Um, the approach that a lot of newspapers have taken, a lot of AP members have taken to covering film is different than it used to be. And there's not as much of a premium placed on, you know, cultural criticism which maybe there shouldn't be in a, in a daily newspaper. I don't know. That's up, up for debate. I think that uh, one of the reasons that we've been reasonably successful is that we do you know, try to give you that, and we do try to 
you know, perform sort of uh, <laughs> client service to people who are very interested in film. Uh, I don't have a whole lot of uh, focus group stuff or studies about who reads what, but I do know from my feedback that a lot of people who pay attention to this section are very knowledgeable about film and they appreciate you know that kind of coverage rather than the sort of and I'm say this without prejudice I just don't think we do it very well or we're not positioned to do it well the sort of celebrity based you know kind of uh, entertainment coverage you can get that in a lot of places that have a lot better access than the Arkansas Democrat Gazette uh, I can get five ten minutes on the phone with anybody probably but five or ten minutes on the phone doesn't necessarily make for um, a good piece or something especially when it's somebody who's being offered to every newspaper in the country and they're saying the same thing and it's you know just puffery it's just a way of marketing a, a movie I'm not in the business of marketing movies I'm in the business <laughs> of saying interesting things to my readers so they can be entertained and informed and know something about what's going on out there in this part of the culture. Uh, I'm not about hyping a movie. I've never been about that. We've never been about that. And I don't know how some people who run um, similar sections in other cities sleep. <laughs> We are not part of the lapdog entertainment press here. And we can afford to be that way because you guys have, you know, read us and take, you know, take care of us. I mean, so we have a relationship. I appreciate it. But we're going to, that's why, that's our philosophy. That's what we're going to try to do. So in a way, this um, pandemic works in our favor because uh, it removes a lot of the big Hollywood pressure and the, you know, which is all based on access. I mean, uh, we would get, we would get screenings for films in the old days when they actually used to have screenings for films here. We would get screenings for films on, conditioned on the fact that we would do interviews with, with some of these people. And it's a bargain you make in this business sometimes. Um, and sometimes you don't make that bargain. Um, but we were, interested in reviewing as much or as many of these films as we could and sometimes to do that we would uh, say okay yeah we'll talk to um, I don't know Ashton Kutcher and we'll we'll make a nice little story out of it. we made a lot of nice little stories and interviews are still part of our mix we do one almost every week uh, <laughs> we try to have something every week I mean Dan Leibarger uh, hustles for us um, just the same way we try to have uh, the DVD column and we try to have now what's becoming an, what's becoming an institution uh, during this pandemic is, is Piers Marchant's uh, look at the video world and um, Courtney Lanning's, who has sort of claimed ownership of this platform diving column, which I thought I would write a lot of these. <laughs> and it turns out I am writing a lot of stuff that would fit in platform diving were the situation different. <laughs> so that's a little bit of all, that's really all I want to do is do a little bit of inside baseball with you guys and, and be transparent about the way uh, we're handling things. Um, because people are, in my experience, people are, are curious. They want to know, you know, uh, how we see these movies. Well, we used to see these movies either in theaters with other critics a week before, or a week or more before they open. Uh, and then we started seeing them more and more on our, you know, iPads and devices from secure links that the studio sent us. Sometimes we'll watch them on DVDs that get mailed out. Um, I don't know if you can see back there behind the guitars. You see the uh, plastic cases there. Those are screeners. Those are all, there's four things, and each one holds, you know, several hundred, you know, disc. Um, those are all, you know, screeners that were been sent from movie theaters or movie studios 
over the years that we decided to keep. A lot of them we don't keep. And sometimes we even go back to the old standby. The DVD. There's a glare because the I don't have any shutters up here. And um, that's usually okay because... Uh, but for some reason, the sky today, it's overcast, and there's a glare, and I can, I can tell that you can't see, that you probably can't see. that This is Top Gun, you know. Now, see, the movie's coming out now in, in December, but before that, they're going to send us all this. You know, yeah, that glare's pretty bad. But, you know, this is the original Top Gun. They're sending this out, so we'll watch that and have some background, you know, and they'll sell some DVDs. You know, and more Tom Cruise movies are sending these out. Like Days of Thunder. Yeah, Days of Thunder. Uh, Paramount Classic. Yeah. I don't know why they sent me Flashdance. I really don't. And this is what makes you really feel weird. Emma is coming out on DVD. That's the last movie I saw in a theater. And I think I saw it. It was an opening weekend. I think it was the weekend after it opened. The, the, the next weekend. I, and that was the last day that uh, you could go to a theater, I believe. I think they closed down Monday. Well, anyway. So, we're in interesting times. Uh, we're going to keep doing what we do. The theater's about to open again. It'll be different. We're going to be here. I hope you are too. So thanks, and uh, <laughs> I got to go and get this all um, ready for the for, for our wonderful technical people to put up online. So we'll see you. Uh, see, you in the, see you in the funny papers. All right. <laughs>